part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. That is not only Superman Day, but it's also the 10th anniversary of Man of Steel. Check out our website on Facebook for the information to join as we will be updating it, our live Man of Steel rewatch. We'll be streaming and we'll be making an online party to rewatch Man of Steel. So please add that to your calendar. And remember... Look up in the sky! Welcome to the Krypton Report. I'm your host, Tyler. And with... I mean, today is James, and we have a special recording that we did with Cress Williams, Mr. Black Lightning himself. So here is the interview that we did with Cress, and tune in and enjoy. Thank you. My, uh, my, my son wanted to say hello, and I told my wife I would let him know when you joined us so he could come yeah, where and say is he? hi. He's coming. I, I sent okay. her a message to send him in to say hi. How is he? I mean, how he, old is he? He's eight. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And so... He's like, oh, cool! Like he's excited, and so. <laughs> no, I have I have a seven year old boy too. So um, I have a six year old girl and an eight year old son. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, no, I, my uh, I have a, a seven year old and uh, my youngest is uh, daughter. She's going to be five this week. But then, and then, and then, I also have an eighteen year old who's a graduating high school next week. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> our, our house is, is That's a, a big one. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Our, our house is a little wild and wacky. Hi, guys. Hey, what's be, up? Be louder, How buddy. How you doing? I, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm I'm playing uh, Sorry with my sister, so that's what I'm doing. The board game Sorry? Yeah. Nice. Are you winning? Um, So far, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, sweet. We'll stick it to her. That's cool. It is cool. <laughs> Happy. So, what's your name? Tell me your name. I didn't... My name is Solomon. Nice name, Solomon. That's a very powerful name. I know. Yeah, it's probably some big shoes to fill. Yeah, he's got wisdom. I'll tell you that for a little man. Yeah, awesome. Well, happy Sunday, Solomon. Good. Sounds good. All right, you want to go play with Sela? Yeah. All right, buddy. Wait, what? What'd you see, Sela? My daughter's name is Sela. Spell it. S E L A H. Are you serious? Yeah, it means to to pause and like kind of like it's like another form of amen. I know exactly because my my soon to be five year old that's her name. For real? Yeah, Sela. Sela is awesome. (laughs) Sela June Williams. Yes. You spell it the same way. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said spell it it's the exact same way, and and it's, and we've got it from the exact same reference. Awesome. See, that's like um, his. My wife's right here. His daughter is about to turn five. Guess what her name is? Sayla. No way. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. So just getting acquainted here. Yeah. yeah no, right. my, uh, my son's and it's so funny. Solomon. My son's name is Josiah. So I that was a number. I that was one of those names that I always loved. And I thought about it, no, and no. I told my wife, like, if we do name our kid Josiah, I was like, we're going to call him Sia as a short yeah. name. It's funny like, because, yeah, no, we, we, when we thought about his name, because, like, having a name Cress, which is a cool name, like, I've never met anybody who's ever had it, but it's so short that it doesn't lend itself to any type of nickname. So, yeah. um, so in picking, like, kids' names, my, like, when I met my wife and when we, like, started dating even when we were friends before we started dating she had had said that if she ever had a girl she wanted to name her Sayla and I was like that sounds that's amazing yes let's have that so we knew that like before we even started dating um but well, that's glad that, about, that's awesome that held so long yes, <laughs> yes. she she stuck to that for years <laughs> well I thought it was amazing I just thought like man that's a that's a beautiful name I've never heard it before uh I in the biblical reference it's just you know but we don't really do anything with that. We just call her like Sayla. But yeah. with like with Josiah, like I was like, we have 
he's like, oh, you got Joe. We have, you know, uh, you have Josiah. And we didn't even realize, like, when he was in preschool, like, we went to school one day picking him up and all his friends were calling him Saya. They were like, Saya, Saya, where I go. But then the weirdest thing is just like it is, like, we we call him and it's just because, I don't know, it's just, it just stuck when he was a baby. Like, every once in a while we'll call him Joe, mm-hmm. but we, I, I usually call him Bubba or Bubs. Nice. It just it, it, it's like you can't account for like this random nickname. It's like so, um, so Solomon's name, like I broke it down. His nickname is just Solo. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. And I'm like, you know, my wife is a, a singer. She's always sung. It's been big in her family. Okay. And everything. So she was. She sang a lot of solos. You know. Yeah. I, I'm a bass player, and everything. So it was kind of like. But then it was also like it's like Han Solo. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. So call him Captain Solo or whatever. And uh, and then because of Solo, sometimes I nickname I'll call him Soul Man. Like that's a super I, name. I'll be like, "Come on, Soul Man!" And he'll be that, like, "Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's wild. I can't wait to tell my wife because it's like, I yeah. Know. yeah, like she was still standing here because she came. I was like, I gotta tell her. I'm like, she's right here. I'm like, I gotta tell her because it's one of those like she brought that was a name that she brought out. Yeah, and we were both just kind of like, all right, you know, because uh, when we went through a lot of trouble to get the kids into the world. And, you know, with Solomon, part of the meeting was peace yeah, and everything. So we're like, and he really reprimands that. And he, it really brought her and I peace from all the tragedy that we had gone through to get him in here to the world. Yeah. Um, and then Sayla was just kind of that. Um, oh, she just texts me and says, my daughter, Sayla, is really excited about her name. So <laughs> that. <laughs> that is awesome. But how have you been, sir? Since the last um, time we chatted, you know, what, yeah. what's going on? Any new projects coming up? Like, um, I've been really good, pretty good. I mean, I, you know, I'm sure you guys know that, you know, uh, there's a strike going on. And so, yes, uh, sir. I actually saw your post. I had that in my notes where you were out there picketing and everything for it. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first time. It was interesting. Um, you know, it, it's just a wild and wacky time. Uh, I mean, I was in the business back in, in 2007 when, the, you know, there was a writer's check back in the 80s, probably before any of us knew of that. But I but I was like in the business as an adult in 2007 when the other one happened. And uh, I don't, you know, honestly, at that time, I wasn't even fully aware. I knew it was kind of like about DVD things. and But I wasn't fully aware of what was going on and the, the general sentiment was kind of like, yeah, they're doing that thing and we're trying to like, you know, keep going. I think everybody was kind of generally thinking um, this is a bit disruptive and, and, and all that. Um, But this time around, it's, there's such a solidarity because we're kind of all in the same boat and it's, you know, it's just more and more challenging to, to make a living. Uh, Like it's kind of, it's, 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 the way the world goes, you know, like the middle class in the world and in our, in our world is getting kind of squeezed out. And so in, in Hollywood, the middle class actor, which I consider myself a middle class actor and a middle class actor gets, is getting squeezed out. Middle class writers, it's like, you know, that top 5% are, are great, but and then everything below that is, is challenging. And so this time around, there's such union solidarity for the writers and, you know, us actors anticipating in a matter of weeks, we'll be doing the same thing. Um, and my wife and I, my wife's an actress as well. And so when the strike started, we were like, yeah, we want to get on the picket line. <clears throat> but, you know, it was, you know, right when it started, we're like, we don't, we're, let's not rush out there now because they have all the energy in the world and all the people in the world. And let's like kind of wait and give it like a month or so when things, people start getting tired and we can come in and be fresh blood and that fresh, you know, but um, so we had actually anticipated waiting, but um, uh, a friend of mine, Lamont McGee, who was a writer on um, on Black Lightning, he uh, messaged me and they have these theme days uh, for striking. I think it's just to kind of keep it fresh. And so he messaged me that Wednesday, this past Wednesday was Superhero Day at one of nice. And so I was like, I think I should go out. <laughs> I think this is the day to go. <laughs> yeah. So. Sure. You know, and so we went out. I've never been on a picket line before, and and we went out, and it was it felt really good because they you just feel like okay, I'm not alone in this, mm-hmm. um, and and it was also just uh, you see so many people, uh, you know, that you 
a actors and uh, cause there's a lot of actors out there. So I see seeing actors and writers that you, you know, like grew up with, but then seeing actors and writers that you worked with and hadn't seen in forever. So it's a bit of a reminiscing and, and all the while, you know, supporting. So, um, we, uh, uh, my, my oldest daughter showed us how we could figure out how, how, how many steps we had taken on our phone and we realized nice. we had done like 15,000 steps that day. Uh, nice. Yeah. I was like, what? I looked it up because <laughs> we were tired, man. I did it. And then we came home. And as soon as like I sat down, I was like, I just, was like, I could go to sleep right now. Why am I so tired? It all caught up with you. <laughs> totally. About, about right. seven miles of, of walking. But, um. And we'll get out there again, you know, but I mean, overall, we're doing well. Um, I'm just trying to enjoy the, the free time um, to be able to be dad 100% and, and be husband 100%. And um, um, my buddy, uh, Nate Scoggins, who I, we did a movie together um, uh, called What Remains, which yep. is out and about. And oh, so, we're going to talk about that because both yeah, him and yeah. I have watched it and Last time oh. we chatted, we didn't get to talk about it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that's going to be kind of a big focal point of the conversations. Because awesome, awesome. We'll talk about that. So anyway, we uh, not to give away with that, but we we started working on th- through just these wonderful. Um, the movie kind of started our first bit of working relationship. We've actually been friends for a long time, and we got even kind of in a weird way. We got closer. Um, when I was doing Black Lightning, and then he brought me a project that he had been working on and kind of reworking um, a, a pilot um, called Who by Fire, which is kind of all about um, the prison camps. And and there's a show out now called Fire Country, which is more, it's not like our show, but set in the same world of, you know, prison camps where uh, inmates also learn to fight fires and fight fires to get time off their sentence or whatever mm. so he, even before that show ever came out he he brought this idea to me and i loved it and we started um working on it we were working on it when i was still in atlanta we were like developing it and and so we got that to a place where we were happy with it and then uh there was a project that i had tried to write back in the early 2000s called um take five which is about four guys in los angeles becoming friends and kind of loosely based on, on a period of time in my life. And um, my wife is the one who reminded me of it. And I kind of dusted it off and and read it and realized I needed some big help with it. And he came on and helped me. And we so we've kind of redeveloped it and got it to a place where we're really happy with it. So we're we're hoping that we have a couple of things that we can get going once all of this stuff settles, you know. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I would I would like to talk about what remains. Yeah. Um I was I watched the movie and I thought about it um afterwards and I I came to the conclusion of what I one of the things I really liked about the movie is it felt like it's a movie that makes you ask if you claim a belief. Yeah. And you and you preach it and you talk about it how much are you willing to go for that belief? <laughs> yeah. And you know I I thought about that cuz you know a little bit of my history is I went to Bible college. Okay. And so, like, I have, I grew up in the church. I I don't have ill will towards religion or anything, but I've okay. met a lot of people who claim something mm-hmm. in their belief system, yeah. but don't ever act it out. They're not. It's not living. You're not seeing. You know, it they're not. They're not authentic. They're not living. And it's something that we've always wrestled to between me and my wife about yeah. the people we interact with in church and stuff. And I've met some really great uh, church people, and mm-hmm. I've met some people who give those people bad names. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, so what I appreciate about in your film was it felt like this is a man who claims something. Yeah. He preaches it to his congregation because you play the pastor role. Yeah. And um, it's testing. Do I really believe what I say? Right. Or not. So that was yeah. one of the things I really appreciate about that movie. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. It's I, I you know, it's funny because um, Nathan, it was a. Uh, well, like a, a full disclaimer, I am a, a follower of Christ myself, and and um, it, that's the one thing that threw me off today because it's Sunday, and like we have this routine, we go to church, and then it's kind of it's kind of a loosey goosey day. I go off and I go grocery shopping for the family, and my wife does the baths for the little ones, and and so I'm sitting there, and and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> I got something to do. <laughs> my brain just went like it was just 
but um but i definitely have you know um experienced people who you know in a sense check the box but mm -hmm. you don't see it in their lives uh i have friends who are you know who aren't believers who um have experienced those types of uh christians um and and then unfortunately will then attribute that to god mm -hmm. um as and then say you know that's that's what christianity is and at you know, times after you're like no that's not you know it's unfortunately it can get messy mm -hmm. because as as my pastor would say people be people in <laughs> yes yeah. yeah you know um and so unfortunately any system we have you know um gets corrupted by people because we're 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 a mess you know uh we're 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 flawed and we're broken and so broken things happen but um what i i love about the film as well is that it's messy you know that it's not it's not crisp and clean and it's uncomfortable um and the you know the, even the ending is uncomfortable um because we're gonna talk about that <laughs> yeah. so that's one thing that it was weird it drew me um when i um read it is because like nathan who, who was a friend of mine and, and we we actually met at church we we have known each other for quite a few years at church but we never really hung out um we were just you know people that we saw at church and say hey hey and all that and and at the church i used to be at um before we moved to atlanta and then moved back um we were at this church and i, I used to teach acting for them on saturdays and and when I got Black Lightning and, you know, we were going to move the whole family to Atlanta, he uh, he came up to me one Sunday and was like, hey, you know, we didn't even have each other's email. He's like, hey, let's exchange emails. And he's like, I'd love to pray for you. And I'm like, OK, cool. So we exchanged emails and, you know, him in L.A. and me in Atlanta. And to his credit, it was like every Sunday he'd send me an email Um and be like, hey, you know, you know, just checking in, da da da, and I'm praying for you about this, this, and that. And you know, a couple of days later, I'd get back to him, and in the email, we're sharing each other's lives. So he's sharing what's going on with his life, and I'm sharing what's going on with mine. So I'm praying for him. We're praying, and it was probably the most it, this weird thing of being, you know, thousands of miles from each other. We it was the most consistent interaction we had. We had it for you know. Um, Month. We had it the whole time I was there, so we had it for like four years. But at one point, um, probably about a year in, he he said, "Hey, you know, would love some prayer. I just finished the script," and and, and I'm like, "Yeah, no, totally, I, I'll, I'll do that." And then I was just kind of like, "Hey, you know, can I read it?" Uh, you know, just like you know, and he's like, "Yeah." So he sent me the script, and and I read it. And when I read it, like, so to his credit, there's no. Um, ethnicity written into the script at all and so i was just reading the script and my own social programming like when i read the script i responded to the character of the pastor i was just like and honestly i was just something i was just like i feel like i'm supposed to play this character but without any uh ethnicities written into the script i just assumed he wanted somebody of color to play the convict and so i was like he's not gonna have uh you know he's not gonna have a a black convict and a black pastor he's not gonna do that that's and that just becomes a black movie so um and then also he's my friend i, I didn't want to put him on the spot he never said hey read it i want to want you to you know be in it so i just i read it and i was just kind of like hey great you know really great script da, da, da. and i think at one point i said oh who are you thinking about for the son and he's like oh it depends on who i cast as the path you know as the father and i didn't want to put him on the spot so we kind of did this dance around each other until finally i just said hey i i don't want to you know you do what you want i don't want to put you on the spot but i just i really feel like i feel called to play this role and then he finally said actually you're the only person i could think of that uh, play that role <laughs> nice oh, that's it, de right. it definitely like you you see movies you're you know and you feel like this person's connecting but then there's times where you feel it and you're like i feel like this person's connecting deeper like there's just a sense you get in their performance and yeah that was gonna be one of my questions. Like, did you like have a connection? But obviously, you did. Um, you yeah, know, yeah. Character. Yeah. And I. I mean, you know, going back like to him, to your and his interaction. I mean, that's like great to hear about. Like genuine practice, genuine people. Yeah. Um, you know, 
talking with each other and and, and wishing the best for each other. Uh, yeah. I love to hear that because it's uh, all too often that's not the case. It, exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, seeing it play out in life. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, you know, the connection, your performance in the film is is amazing. It's fantastic. Um, oh, man, you can you can see your, the conflict. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the the conflict from the very beginning of you talking to the funeral um, yeah. ab- about what happened. Um, yeah. And then, and then the entire film, your, your work with um, Kellen at the time, uh, yeah. y- it was really, it was really great um, uh, to see that. And I think, I think with the, with your idea of it being a, a person of color with, yeah. as the convict, I think that would have drastically changed what the movie was or how the person would have been treated. Yes. Um, yeah. And I think, and, and I think it was so well because he wasn't treated well coming back to the town. No. You know what I mean? But it would have been, I think, I think the focus would have been so much worse if, if it was the other way around, unfortunately, you know? Totally. Yeah, totally. I mean, and yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, I, I, I just felt like, and I think roles like that, uh, you know, I'm a father, and so that was a, one of the things I could connect with. Like, I remember when I read the script, and, and it was wonderful to read a script without any attachment, to, mm-hmm. to almost read it like a book. With you know, Because sometimes reading something when somebody says, read this, and I'd like you to do this role, then you're, it's, your reading of it is kind of skewed already. And so when I read it for him the first time, I was just reading it to give him some, you know, advice or just kind of support my friend. And I, I just immediately stepped in and identified with the father's role. And uh, I felt that the conflict as I was reading it, where, you know, he makes this decision for his son. And even though it's not an easy decision, like I remember just feeling like, no, that's the decision I would make. It's not the right, it's not easy, but it, it it seemed very clear to me, which is, it was a good thing I was playing the role that it was like, that's a decision I, I would make because I had talked to other people and Hayes was one of them um, who r- was telling uh, Nathan that my character was ridiculous, like that he shouldn't play. And I was like, because from her perspective, it was like, you can't do that. It's an absolute mistake. But I was like, that's fine. She can, she, she can like, feel that way. Right. Like you're letting a, like a murderer walk kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what that, that interaction with your son at that point, I love that when he, when you like, he's convinced that this guy is a murderer and he didn't, you know, he should still be in prison. He deserves what he got, yeah. but you there, like you're letting your son walk away after what he did fully yeah. knowing and it's like i i still have to believe that even a murderer is has is capable of that redemption yes exactly i mean you, you know the movie it is all about forgiveness and it's all about those things kind of those principles that and i don't think christianity is unique to it you know that life we have these principles that we we have in our head or even in our hearts, but then what happens when you, when the rubber meets the road and you have to live that out, you know, forgiveness from a distance is is fine, you know, and I think even, you know, the character decided he was going to forgive, forgive uh, Kellen's character um, and push that he, you know, get a light sentence because he he may never see again. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, this, this is what my wife would have wanted. And it's easy to do it because I'll never see him again and I've done it. But then now when you're like confronted with it, you know, day in and day out, like, okay, can you live that out? And, and then there are consequences to living that out. And um, so I think it's a really human story. And, and I love that it would just wasn't left in a nice, neat bow. It's not necessarily a happy ending. That was one of the things that kind of drew me to go on. It's, this, is a, this is a film that I, I feel like people would walk out and, and continue a conversation. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because, and, yeah. Like, like you said, like as you have your role as a human, yeah. you know, you have your role as a father and you have yeah. your role as a pastor, and a, which means you're like a leader of a community. And like you said in the film, like your role is to give people hope. Yeah. 
And it's like, how do you walk then? How do you lead that? And then the same thing is as fathers, like James and I both are. Yeah. You, I would totally, you, you do anything to protect your child. Yeah. You know, and it's in that yeah. same vein that you showed of like forgiveness and second chances. Just the difference is now you're going on another step of protection. Exactly. And even from, you know, and honestly, honestly from a nuts and bolts logical standpoint, I, you know, I, when I look at it from like point, you know, from the beginning to end, it was like, well, this was my fault because, you know, if I did what my son wanted, if I didn't bring this guy in and give him a job and, and bring him into my, into our lives, um, then my, my son would have never even been in that position to even do what he did. So I was all like, this was my fault. So mm. I, I, I'm going to, I, that's the way I looked at it. It was like, of course I got to take the fall. Of course this is, you know, um, and, uh, it was weird, man, because because you know you've seen the film. It's like there's not a lot of nice, fun things in there. So no. we went to do it, and uh, and we were in Amarillo, Texas. It was like just putting my head down and living in a very kind of uh, dark, depressing place for I don't know how many weeks. We shot. Um, uh, it was like this. Okay, this is what I'm about to do, and this is and there's there's not going to be a lot of fun. Except for like, you know, those weekends when I have a couple of days off and I can kind of at least take a day to not think about this anymore. But then it's like right back in there again. My I would say my most what's interesting is I'm watching the film. Yeah. My son's kind of moving around and then he sits down with me. And the part where he sits down and is talking like he's like, What you watch him? And uh-huh. I tell him about it. And it's at the scene that I think is so brilliant is when the father walks in and basically lies to his son where he's at. And the camera splits. Yes. Okay, and you yeah. get the two shots. Yeah. The one representing what the father actually does. Yeah. And the one representing what he should do. Yeah. And, and I'm sitting there with Solomon and we're watching it. And he's like, he's, and I'm like, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm like, you know, like, okay, I get what's going on. And then he asked me and I stop it and I tell him and explain like, this is what's going on. Yeah. And that led to a conversation with me and him about the importance of him and I always being able to talk. Yeah. You know, and like not just father and son, but like communicate with my children and my wife and everything. And then what's, what's funny is later that evening, he walks and he goes, dad, I need to talk to you. And he's like, he's like, you said you'd always talk to me. And he had some stuff going on at school with like some, yeah. some friends who were kind of flipping the script or kind of being bullish and kind of, you know, he's got that with, you know, what's, what's really a friend. He's going through that, you know, he's in second grade, and, mm-hmm. but it was just, you know, that was what I feel like another part of this movie that shows the importance of communication. Yeah. Of not hiding things. Um, because if you know your character had been more open to his son and yep. sat down and had that conversation at the table, yeah, that would have been like the end of the movie. Yep. Or like it would have been, but no. And I, I what as the movie went on, I wondered if we would see like a dual ending or something where like if we would have went back to that scene or something and kind of oh, that's interesting. What what would have happened, like almost like more parallel scenes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I found it just really emphasized the importance of communication. Yeah. And, uh, you know, bringing your son to the same part where you are. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that was, like, that was, uh, first of all, I'm just getting chills. It was, it was, uh, that's, that's what you described. It's like, that's, you know, one of the many reasons we do this. I mean, that the fact that you could be sitting there watching it and, sit there with your son and it opens the door to communication that something that affects your life and affects your relationship. That's, that's, you know, a beautiful part of, of about art. And, um, yes. and, and, and yeah, those, those, you know, doing those, the, that split screen, but then watching it. Cause I watched it later. It is so hard because it's just like, Oh, if you, you know, just open your mouth and you just step in that yeah. moment this whole thing goes a whole different direction and and good things come of it um uh yeah yeah that's awesome yeah i i was watching it and i was i, I really liked the juxtaposition of of what happened and then i was like well is, is this going to be the start of like you said more parallels as to like yeah. what could have happened or what what might turn it around and bring it back. But yeah. then when it kind of did the, the, eh, 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 and faded out and went to black, I was like, Oh no. I was like, I don't think that's what happened. And, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then yeah. it came back around. I was like, Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah. 
That's I mean, sad. fortunately, you know, as parents, we have those moments. Uh, like, I think it's been very, very important. I don't know if it was ever, like, really mirrored for me as a child, but, like, the ability of, of when I'm wrong to go to, to my, you know, my child and say, I'm sorry, my fault. Like, I, no, I was wrong. Like, you know, because I think, especially older generations had this kind of, wanted to create this infallible facade. So they mm-hmm. could never apologize to their their child when they did something wrong or missed the boat or whatever. But you can see the effect on a child's face when you can when you can do that. When you can yeah. come up to them and say, it's my fault. I I've that's something that I've you know, I've done with my kids like and try to be like, look, you know, I'm doing the best that I can and yeah. sometimes daddy messes up too and yeah. Yeah. apologizing yeah, my- for them and stuff. So Right. Yeah. My, my kids, uh, I have three kids, uh, uh, 14, 13 and one. Oh my God. Um, oh, you're, so, in four, you're in it. Oh my, the, you yeah. 14 and 13. I'm sorry. I feel <laughs> for you. Um, so actually that communication and that vulnerability being able to talk to me, it's like yeah. they, they're hiding in their room. It's like, yeah. you can talk, you can talk yeah. to me. <laughs> it, gets, I, it gets better. It gets better. They yeah, do. well, they, they, they're dealing with some tough things, too, with, with family and um, my ex, their mother. So it's yeah. a rough go uh-huh. here and there, touch and go from time to time. Um, yeah. So they're dealing with a lot. So definitely having to speak with them, trying to open up to me, you yeah. know, show them that I'm vulnerable and, and apologize, as well as, um, you know, anything that's uh, bothering them. They can talk to me. Yeah, no, my eight, my eighteen year old is from my first marriage, and is you know I was blessed to um, have uh, started out with like exactly split custody, um, and then and then very quickly after that moved to full custody. So she's been with me my whole life. But when you hit, I think I, I and I'll find out with my other little ones. But when you hit um, middle school age, it gets rough and. I think it was exasperated and more rough because of the whole blended family thing. Um, but now on the other side of it, it was really right around when she turned 17 that it started to get a lot better. And, and oh, well, that's good. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. I've got, a, well, I've got a blended family. My, my girlfriend has um, five kids, her fifth okay. being my youngest. So okay. together we actually have seven children. Wow. So... <laughs> It's your house, uh your house is never uh, mm-hmm. it's it's actually interesting because my little one my one year old she's um well her name is Allura okay um n- uh, named after Supergirl's mom nice nice um so uh she my kids go to their mother's house yeah. for a time her okay. kids go to their father's house for a time so uh-huh. she's got this block almost every week where she gets this single child experience this only child experience, but then she has so many brothers and sisters. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, they do, they do like, honestly, they do, they, I, I heard it. And then now I'm, I'm living it where I'm like, Oh, at some point they come back. Like at some <laughs> point, I'm 17 or 18, they start to come back. Um, I think they start to realize adulthood is coming and they start to realize that, they, you know, where they, that, what they're experiencing with you is not always going to be there, you know? Right. So they, I think right. they start to uh, come back and start to slowly appreciate all the things you you have been doing and, and are doing. And, and they also are afraid <laughs> of real, of real life because real life starts coming at them and they're like, Oh man. Yeah. I, I, say, I don't know if that ever stops being scary sometimes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, yeah, it, it's amazing. Like with my my oldest, it's amazing seeing her. I kind of want to be an adult, but then confronted with some adult things, going, "Oh, I don't want to be an adult," <laughs> you know. And um, yeah, it's it's a uh, I don't know. It's it's a journey. It, it is, and I look, I look, I will take it as it comes. You know. Uh, yeah. I wanted to ask if, at the end of the movie, and then we'll go. We'll talk about some other things, but yeah. in the script, was it always like? Usually I can figure out clues and everything in movies, but I feel like the, the movie ended very ambiguously. Yes. Was it like that in the script? Like you don't yeah. have to spoil anything, but I'm just wondering yeah. like was it written like when you read it, like how did you feel with how the movie ended? It was a hundred percent ambiguous. I would even say without ru- ruining it, I think 
on the page, it was even more ambiguous. Like, mm. uh, yeah, like, and I don't know, it's hard for me to look at it the way everybody else looked at looks at it because I think it it's something just very minor. It's not giving it away, but I think something's just very minor in on the page. It, it at least the way I read it, it seems like he's uh, that he's just sitting in the car, like just there, mm-hmm. and it, and then it ends. Whereas. I think in the way the movie and him pulling up makes it a little less ambiguous, but it was all the intention was for, was for it always to be ambiguous. Um, and just basically the, the ending to be in the eye of the beholder. Cause even Nathan won't tell me what he thinks the ending is. And he I wrote think- it. He wrote it and directed it. He's like, he won't, he won't tell me. Like, I, I told him, because I'm like, no, this is what I think happened. And, and this is what I think, you know, how the movie continues on. Because um, I have no problem sharing that. That's just what my act, my, my character's, you know, doing and what, yeah. I, what I think. But he was like, he, he, he hasn't really shared it. So I think it was always the intention to be ambiguous, which is also what I loved about it. Um, when, after, when I read it, I was like, I, I you know, it films that don't give you the answer and where you know people can go out and have a discussion and somebody goes i think it's this i think i think it's that and we that's you know that's good art yeah yeah the the way it ends i mean just yeah the way it ends i mean the how how it does what happens and then it cuts to black yeah it it could honestly be he he either popped it in park or he dropped it in drive so he either exactly. stayed or he left yeah and it's right there it's right there in it and yeah. it's like that's it exactly. <laughs> and well, like I think we... when i read it on the page it was like he had already like basically the car was off and that you you feel that he's already he's just been sitting there and the car's not even on so i and then it, and it fades to black that's why I, I when you read it how it came across which i think feels even more ambiguous as opposed if the car's still running i think it might mm-hmm. still People might go one way or the other, but at the same time, it's still like, oh, like you said, pop it in park or park it and pop it in drive. So um, I love that. What what I love is like back to what we said earlier, I think the film in itself is a conversation mm-hmm. um, about choice and consequences and yeah. what you, like you said, what you think it ended, what would you do? What would you do as each character? What would you do as a father? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And the theme of forgiveness. I mean, could you do, could you do what, you do yes and and forgive him and help him or yeah. or would you go as far as what other people say like the sheriff says and yeah. what other people say but what your son says is yeah. you know or or would you go that route where you couldn't forgive him yeah. there was there was one point and in have to take revenge yeah where the journal is discovered by the son that i wondered if the son was going to try to give the sheriff the journal to say it was like a premeditated thing and he was going to try. Uh, that was that was a read that I had for a little while. But yeah. He was going to try to flip it back around that he did it himself, you know. But yeah, yeah. Well, and it was one thing too that was. I mean, kind of going back, speaking to the script and from page to actually doing it. And so, like I said, you know, Nathan wrote a, a script with no no ethnicity, and so in the scene when the son comes to me and shows me what he did and. And we're, you know, out in front of the car and we're talking through it. There's a line where, you know, the whole scene where he's like, I'll get the same treatment he did. And, and it's like, no, you won't. And because of like, we added the line in the moment as we were just kind of improvising, we added the line or I added the line, like you're a black man in Texas. You're not going to, you know, basically, and, and it all, it, it, it rang true in that moment and we, we did it and we just kept doing it that way. And then I remember at one point um, when uh, we were done and, and we we're back home and Nathan was editing it and, and he was like, Hey, and he called me up and he was like, I just, I want to, I just, he's like uh, people, some, some people he, like, he's like, are, are pushing for me to get rid of that line. And he's like, so, you know, what do you think? And, and I, you know, I was just like, Hey man, it's, it's your movie, you know, 
um, because like I kind of signed on for this, uh, on this job. I signed on to be the actor. I wasn't the things that we're working on now. I'm, I'm an actor, producer, creator, like we're, they're like our babies. But this one, I was like, no, I'm, I signed on to be the actor to help you, you know, create your story. But I, I said, but it's, my opinion is you can, you should keep it in there because it's just the reality of the moment. It's, we don't hit the, the audience over the head with it, but it's just, that's real. Mm-hmm. And there are going to be some people of color in the audience who are going to watch that. And, and by hearing me say that it will, it will give the rest of the movie credibility. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he yeah. you know, he listened to me and to his credit, he, he stuck to his guns and kept yeah. it in there. And I, I just thought that was awesome. Yeah. in in that moment, um, that line, like when it, when you delivered it, it, it rang true, but it's nothing. It's not what I. It's not what I held on to. No, um, it, you know yeah. that's not. Yeah, it's yeah. not what I held on to in that line. The in in that in that exchange, it was the um, uh, it, it was premeditated murder. You know, right. it is right. premeditated murder. I mean, that is honestly the biggest part of yeah. what happened. Premeditated yeah. murder, and then you know the reality of everything else setting in. That exactly. that was what I had taken from it. So exactly. Well, because I, I think it hit. I think it hit perfect. Yeah, because I just felt like it was part of the conversation. Because I made a point too. I think I t- taking the the moment in that scene where I ask him, like, was it an accident? Like, I I make sure I I made sure to hit that hard. I think I even repeated it because to also like, uh, I, I think to to um highlight the difference that like if he could say no it was an accident it was self-defense okay now we can go down a different road Mm -hmm. we can we can talk about some other things and i think i even said it like almost in a pleading way like please tell me it was an accident because if it was Mm -hmm. it's something totally different um which i think i even added that or kind of highlighted it even more than it was in the script because of that that purpose It, it was a very well done scene of just the layers of your stress, your trying to figure out what to do, but also like where to go from here. Yeah. And you're, you want to yell at your kid, but you're at the same time, like know that they're in a state of panic as well. Yeah. So you're managing all this emotion and it's very, very well and believably executed scene. Oh, thank you. That, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. That scene uh, was scary for me. It was, it was not scary, but it was, it was a scene that I walked away that night really unsure of. Like it, it, when you're filming at times, there are times when I'm doing a scene on any project that I internally just know it's working. Like I, I'm like, oh, I love it. I, and I, and I, I could do this scene all these different ways. And I just feel like it's clicking so that any, if when it's time to move on, you know, they're like, are you happy? I'm like, yes, totally happy. Let's go. Um, you know, there was uh I think this the, the scene um, with Kellen and I um, after we go through a whole a day of work out out on the farm and we have this scene by the truck. I'm sitting on the bed of the truck around sun sunset and t- talking to him about my wife and and all that. That was one of those scenes where I was like, okay, I know this is working. Um, but that the scene that that night of of you know my son coming and showing me the car and showing me what he did. I, I wasn't sure to be perfectly honest. We did all these different takes and I had to just kind of go to Nathan and he's like, and I'm like, are you happy? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. Cause I can't tell. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't tell. So I'm just going to trust you. Cause you're the one looking at it that right. you've got everything you wanted and you're happy. And you know, that's, you, that's kind of like that leaning partnership you have to have with your your director at times where you're like I can't see it I'm in the fishbowl as my old acting teacher says as as an actor when you're in a fishbowl you you got a distorted view of what's happening and so you have to trust people outside the fishbowl to go no it's it's yeah everything's there we're we're good we can you know move on so afterwards when I saw it I'm like okay because it was because there's so many things going on right you know it's like it's just there's so many emotions and 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 so as an actor i'm not trying to make sure i'm hitting every single one and that it feels authentic and it was just 
Right. Well, yeah. you, and you don't know what, yeah, you don't know what's being seen. You don't know what's going to be yeah. covered up or taken away in post, like exactly. yeah. that type of stuff. So, I mean, that's, that's got to be hard sometimes thinking on it afterwards. Um, yeah. And imagining, uh, we're just imagining. Cause like, it's what I love about the, the film too, that it's not very graphic. So, you know, people can watch it. It's not, um, you know, I mean, the acts or the, the 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 knowledge of the acts are violent, but it's not a gory movie. It's mm-hmm. not a, you know, it's done in a way that it's more let your imagination go. So you know, even that scene when he comes and opens the car door, we're not looking at anything. Right. We're, it's, it's we're very. Having... Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's very tastefully shot. Yeah, and so yeah, we absolutely. have to imagine all of it there kellen wasn't there that day you know sitting in the car you know we just had to imagine it and put it in our heads and and go and run well i i mean i know you're a big i know you're a big guy you know you're tall but i mean so is kellen i think that'd be pretty hard for you to get that guy up and get him into the truck oh, yeah, and everything. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> I mean, he's well, pretty that, big yeah. dude <laughs> yeah i mean that night when we did the whole thing that you know me transferring him over and setting fire to the truck he was there um that night and yeah, we had to tweak how to do it because it's written. I was going to say, did you get him? Like, was uh, that him? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. I mean, we had, we had to tweak it because I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't. <Yeah. laughs> like, like my, my knees don't work like they used to. Uh, that was one of the things I pulled myself out of the movie was like, <laughs> I'm going to have to ask him. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, tweaked, you know, we, we tweaked it. He helped me out a little bit. And he, to his credit, he really, he, you know, um, he, he he helped me out, and we just had to kind of been like, oh, we'll cut from here to there, and and to make it look right, because it's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not that young. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, your your performance and the choice that's made in the movie, um, you know, the all the time that you give to, um, to Choi's character, um, and then and then actually talking to him about not about losing that relationship with your son. Yeah. And then in the end, doing what you do as a choice for him. Yeah. You know, I mean, even even when you lose them, that you're you have that distance. I mean, couldn't imagine being being ha- having my mother killed like that. You know, and yeah. and seeing that person, especially seeing that person working side by side with my dad. Exactly. Like that would be. Um, so just like to put yourself in those shoes, but, um, yeah, your, uh, your performance pulling that off at the end, um, you know, just doing anything for them. Yeah. Um, I, I felt that it was, yeah, it was great. It's, it, you know, it's a challenging, uh, thing. And sometimes it's just that <clears throat> wonderful thing where a writer can write something, um, and then, you know, Nathan writing the script, but then he put things in there and I think they were kind of unconsciously, like he was just led to put certain things in there that then I, as the actor could fill in the blanks because there was a a tough and I didn't want it to feel the transitions, like, like, you know, the moment when Kellen's character comes, um, when I'm trying to take trash cans out and I end up basically offering him a job, like that's a hard like the script can say this, you you start here, you go here, you do this, but to make it make sense for me was hard. Like I'm like, how do you, how does this not turn into a Hallmark movie? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, but one of the things that was interesting um, is the way Nathan wrote it, and and it was the wife, the deceased wife was almost a character in the movie, even though she wasn't there. And some of the things that my character has said about her created who this person was. And so for me, those hard terms of how do I forgive this guy? How do I give this guy a job? How do I, from what the way I could justify it is like, I could, it was almost as if I could, my wife was on my shoulder and I could hear her saying, do this. Mm. I was going to say like you're Leonidas from 300 and you look back at your wife and she gives you the nod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was the for me the driving force of doing all those things was that it was her going to do this. And there were times when I care, you know, my character's in the office and I had a, we had a picture of her up there, 
on the desk and I could look at her and like, you know, the internal dialogue for me was just like, I hope this is what you wanted. I think this is what you wanted. Um, because otherwise it just kind of act those things out. It just felt too perfect too. Yeah. yeah. I liked you genuinely asking her in the movie. Yeah. You know, hopefully this is what you would want. I, yeah. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Is, is very, yeah. The whole movie was very, um, uh, even even though it's the themes and everything is very uh difficult um it's it's very dark the movie was still very um um heartwarming or at least touching nice yeah, nice. yeah. Nice. all right we're gonna turn it around a little bit because yeah. so, we're running low on time um <laughs> uh, i want to say you know uh looking at my notes here black lightning ended in 2021 yeah. Have you been doing any of the conventions, like going and doing any like that type um, stuff? I haven't. I, I, I honestly, I, um, what was it? I think it was during the a hiatus of our first season. We had finished our first, oh no, maybe it was our second. It might've been our second. Uh, oh no, maybe it was our first. And uh, I had never done conventions, you know, like when I got the job, I did San Diego Comic-Con uh, the first time, which, you know, uh, for people, people who don't know, when they, you think about San Diego, com- like Comic Con, it's different than conventions all over the place. Like Comic Con is really a giant press junket. It's it's just everybody publicizing, you know, getting the word out about their things. Um, so uh, in that hiatus, I signed up and did a bunch of conventions. Uh, I'd never done them before, and um, my daughter, actually, my wife was pregnant. Uh, with my with Sela and um, uh, I had booked all these conventions and at the, the I think one of the last ones I did I was I was like I hope she doesn't come early because <laughs> otherwise I'm gonna have to hop on a plane and get back and you know she waited and all that but I had done so many of them in such a short period of time that I got really exhausted um, and then uh, you know and then in a, kind of in a blink of an eye COVID hit and and that shut everything down. Um, and then we've been back and at home and, and I just haven't, you know, gotten up to, to do them again. I think COVID still kind of scares me a little bit because you're, you're interacting with people like all day long and, you know, like just close touching people, shaking hands. I don't, I don't know how to do things from a distance, like in, in like if I'm going to be somewhere, I want to really connect with a person and I don't know how to do it halfway. So I haven't really done any other ones, um, in a while, but, uh, yeah, I did them early on. That's cool. I mean, you know, it's one of those things you see, like you see certain actors like go through phases, like, um, like just recently with the flash ending, I see that Grant Gustin just started doing conventions. Like he, he hadn't done any, yeah. And like they was he was close um like two weeks ago. He joined Indiana, which is, you know, we're in Ohio, so it was like he joined on Indiana. I was like, oh man, that would have been cool. Okay. So I just I just wonder like if that's something that you've thought about getting back out there or doing or anything. I might it, it, you know, I might do it at one the other thing that's challenging is that it's like it uh it's it there everything's taken me away from home and like the the age of my kids, it's like um you know it I also want to be that guy. I don't want to be that dad. I guess. Oh, I I I understand that. You know, I, I took yeah. a five a.m. a five a.m. flight. That means I got to the airport at three from San Francisco to get back here uh-huh. by. I got. I think I landed back here like at two or three to go see okay. my kids play because it was yeah. the last night it was open, and it was only a half an hour of play. But they had been working out for so long. And you know, I landed and I had like no sleep. I got back. I went to that play. They were excited came home and just pff, crashed yeah and, you know what i'm saying like i, yeah. I don't I, so i feel like i don't want to be that dad like if i they got something going on like i want to be there for it no matter what it yeah. is yeah i don't want to be i don't want to be uh, you know i don't want my my kids to get used to me not being around um and and so I've, you know that's when like when i booked black lightning that was the thing why i was like every hey if i'm doing this we're all moving because i'm not going to be this person you only see on a screen and yeah and we did that and we and then we came back home and I said, okay, I, I, you know, I kind of, at least for a period of time, uh, I'm going to, I'm trying to focus on exclusively working in, in California. Cause I'm like, I don't, 
I, I don't, we, I can't pack them up and move them all the time because that's not fair. They got, you know, they, especially they, they're, they're in school and they got friends and they got a life and I don't want to be the absentee dad. So yeah. um, um, I look at something like, you know, speaking of Black Lightning, like James Remar, you know. Great uh, actor. Great actor. Yes. Yeah. And he's an empty nester. And so I was like, you know what? When I'm his age, uh, my kids will be grown and that's when I can just traipse all over the world. Um, my wife and I, we talk about, yeah, someday we'll just traipse all over the world doing this, doing that and, and having a great That's time. Cool. So now with black light, I have to ask, I meant to ask you last time, which yeah. suit, which suit did you like wearing better? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I definitely liked the second suit better, the newer, the newer suit. Um, a lot more comfortable, a lot more comfortable. Oh my God. That first suit was excruciating um it was so heavy it was so bulky uh and it's funny because um uh laura jean um uh lj as we call her she's the one who designed and 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 uh you know supervised the suits being made and she refers to me she's like you are a guinea pig you are first because she we did you know she did black lightning but then after that like she went on to do um like she did all the suits for um, uh, Titans. Oh, cool, cool. Um, I can kind of see that now. Yeah, she did all the suits for uh, the boys. Oh, nice. Um, and 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 you know, and she's I'm sure she's doing more and more suits. But like, she's like Black Lightning was the first, and so I was the guinea pig in all these things and trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, and what. Um, and so, you know, going from the first suit to the second suit, a lot of bugs have been worked out, and it was it was much easier to wear and and move and fight and um uh yeah we actually we're late to the game uh my wife and i we just started watching titans we're like in in the, the kind of the middle of season two right now okay yeah cool yeah. how are you enjoying that because uh it's it's got its you know it's got yeah, its, its fans and its detractors you know it, it's an up and down like it feels i don't want to talk bad about my show but it feels at times uh-huh. unbalanced yeah, it's interesting. And, and, and I think it, it boils down to like, it's whatever, whatever anybody's asking for, right? So like, when I started watching the first season, and I didn't know if, if I was going to like it. Um, so I started watching a few episodes, and I found myself really liking it. So I told my wife about it. I'm like, hey, and then I said, hey, you know, what? if, if you're into it, and she's like, no, I, I want to watch it. I'm like, cool. Um, and so I, I went back to watch the first season with her. Um, and then we continued on that way. And um, because we, I have some friends who said, oh, it takes a while to get going. And it, almost like they were kind of poo-pooing the first season and they liked it more as it went on. And I had some friends who were like really liked the first season and said, oh, I don't know about everything after. But it's I think it depends on what you want. I personally, I, I you know, I still got quite a bit to go, but I really liked the first season because it didn't the pacing that it didn't just it wasn't like blink 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 and now they're a team and now we're just fighting crime yeah they just they i liked how they took their time with it all and like that i was like almost through the first season and raven still doesn't know who she is and and all that like i didn't mind that pacing i'm now that i'm into season two kind of halfway it started to feel like it's going to start to get to like i don't know like the normal pacing and i like this is probably what other people like I kind of liked the you know the other one. but but we're different that way like when we were watching um Star Trek Picard I don't know if you guys have seen any of that I did the first season I binged and, it and I, yeah and the thing is like I my, my wife and I loved the first season a lot and then we watched the second season and really almost didn't almost stopped watching. It was almost like, we're not going to watch it anymore. That's what I heard. That's why I haven't done the second season yet. Yeah. And then the third season, um, a lot of people really loved. I definitely like the third season more than the second season, but the third season really gives like all the uh, next generation, huge, you know, next generation fans. It gives you, it gives you all the, it gives them all the touchy feelings, like it, 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 you know. But what I loved about the first season that it, it, that it was, it wasn't just the next generation. It was like it was kind of funky mystery, you know, sci-fi noir thing going on that I really, really dug. So for me, the first season was my favorite. Mm. But for a lot of people who 
really just want to see an extension of Star Trek Next Generation, they were like, eh, but you that know, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I have another black lightning question that yeah. I've been wondering in the, in the pilot, when they mm-hmm. show like the flashback stuff, was that you in that first costume doing the flashback scenes? Like when, like really quick. Cause I remember that, you know, the, like, the classic costume. I was going to say, yeah. I was going to, my question was going to be like, did you only get to wear like the classic costume? Like, a, cu- a few times <laughs> yeah um it was I'm, I, it's interesting because we did a uh and i'm trying to remember what ended up being in there we definitely did i i wore the classic costume and did a whole bunch of stuff in the classic costume um and i'm not sure what it, i forgot what ended up in there but it's like, just some quick shots of like like security cam footage it's just yeah. like and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah so that we actually shot a lot more uh, in the classic costume. There was a whole fight sequence in the school um, mm. in the classic costume. Um, because w- w- So when we shot the pilot, um, when we shot the first episode, we actually, before the show got picked up, we shot what they call a teaser. Which So it was like, it wasn't the whole pilot, but it was like uh, just almost like a trailer of... of uh, the show and so in that we shot so we shot all this regular stuff and then like literally the last day because like my my character you know the class we decided in the classic suit he was bald so we shot all this stuff and then on the very last day they completely shaved my head and and um and then we got into the classic suit and then we shot the stuff in the classic suit but then when we and then when we show got picked up then we went back and shot all the extra scenes to make one full episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did, did I did, did do some stuff in that classic suit. Nice. nice. Yeah. Well, we're hitting um, our one hour mark. Uh, just I was going to say, I was, yeah, I just got one last question. Um, yeah. DC, you're, you're a big DC fan. Um, yeah. Your DC, you know, legacy. Uh, <laughs> just wondering if you, um, if, if, you had anything that you were looking forward to or something that you might want to do um, in DC, like uh, a character or voice acting, if you have any projects coming up? Um, well, I mean, mm-hmm. like, like any other fan, I'm looking forward to uh, the, the film, the flash. It looks really cool. Um, and I've kind of been, you know, now that um and uh, HBO Max has become Max. We 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 used to call it Hobo Max, and now we still <laughs> now, now we just call it Hobo. I'm like I'm not gonna give you the Max. I'm just call it Hobo. And um, recently, I've been going back and watching some of the like I I watched because um, uh, I had never seen the director's cut of of uh, Batman v Superman. Oh, so nice. I wanted to watch the director's cut of that, which I just finished like last week. And then because I was I was starting to, to rewatch the director's cut of Justice League. And I was like, no, 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 I want to go back and watch this, the director's cut of Batman v Superman. And so I watched that, and it really got me excited. Again, I I, uh, I, I check out all DC animation. Uh, this is why we like this guy. This is why. He, yeah. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I mean, because I, I was this, I was this guy before Black Lightning. Like I was, this is who I am, you know. So it was just kind of perfect. Um, and I love, I, I, I love what I love about DC. What it's done really well. First of all, DC animation is, for the most part, is better than, un- unfortunately, DC film. Like, I-, I was just talking to some friends literally last night as we were talking about Black Adam, and no disrespect to anybody, but I, that's not a very good film. Um, and I was talking about a friend of mine who she watched the movie Black Adam and didn't like it, but she didn't really know the story at like a of fate i'm like i was really unfortunate because i'm like that's a great hero who could have his own movie and should have his own movie and i was kind of telling you know telling her about no the thing is the helmet is like a it's like it almost like possesses a person and Mm -hmm. and you and once you you have that helmet like it's not letting you go and it's and when i was telling her the the story she's like oh my god like yeah it should be its own film and yeah and then we were talking about, you know, DC and I'm like, you know what, DC can't be Marvel and it shouldn't try to be Marvel. What it should try to do is, and I think when DC works at its best is when it's dark and when it's rooted in, in humanity, like yes. it, where, when we see, you know, not just great powers, but the repercussions of those powers from a human level is that's cause that's what DC can do really well that Marvel doesn't do really well. 
And so, um, but I'm, yeah, I'm excited about the flash. Um, and God, what I, I don't know. I feel like there's so many things I would love to do, but I feel like, I, I feel like it's a young man's game and they like, I feel like they've all passed me by. I don't know. You know, that was, that was always one thing that I appreciated about when you did do black Adam was the idea of the older superhero who's right in a way I had done that, but now I'm coming back to it and I'm a father, you know, and I, that was always one thing that I loved up. Oh, there's a Laura. Hi. <laughs> Say hi. But Mr. Williams, we thank you for your time today. <laughs> No we, know it a, we know it was a rough start. We appreciate you coming no, back and chatting. No worries. With I, I, I probably dominated some time, so I just wanted to also say if there's is there any questions that you were like dying to ask that you're like, oh, I know that we're out of time, but if there's any questions that you were dying to ask, I have no problems answering them. No, I you know, my my notes here I just referenced was I was really excited because we both watched your new your latest film. Yeah. And you know I just you, finished it today. We wanted to hit on that, you know. And that Fresh. was like part of like your discussion piece because I didn't get to talk to you about it last time. Yeah. So that was kind of where I wanted to stay yeah. and then throw right. in a little black lightning questions that I had from last time. So awesome. It was a pleasure, guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, the strike ends and I, I have some new things for, yeah. to, yeah. for us to chat about later because I, yeah. I love talking to you guys. Hey, thank you. Bye. We appreciate that. I Check look out- forward to anything you've got coming <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> Check Thank out Crisis Film. Luckily, it is on Amazon Prime. So if you are a Prime subscriber, it's called yes. What Remains. Check it out. It's it's worth your time. Great discussion points and just, you know, being able to put yourself in those characters' positions. Yeah. Thanks, so, man. You're welcome. Thank you for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Today. No problem. Appreciate you guys. Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton. Before we start this episode of Krypton Report, I want to take a moment and just give a shout out here. To our Patreon. I know what you're thinking. Gosh, everyone's asking for money. And I get it. But our Patreon is only a dollar. One dollar a month that helps us keep the podcast going. And what we do is we try to find interesting shows and topics and whatever we want to talk about. We've done, as of this little thing, our last recordings were on the Scream series. Brian and Tyler, that's me, do our own show where we record in the car. And it's kind of funny. And we talk about pop culture or whatever is going on. We also have the Supernatural podcast we've been reworking. It's taken some time just because of life. But we do movie commentaries as well. It's something that James and I have done, what we used to do on the main show that we've started doing here. So for $1 a month on our Patreon, you can get those shows. There's at least four a month. Also, there's my movie pitch show that I do. But also, what we want is if you're a Patreon, you can come on. You can come on the main show if you want. Or if there's something you want to come on and talk about, we can do it as a Patreon special. So all I want is for $1 a month, think about chipping in, joining our Patreon, and you have a voice to be a part of things. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash kryptonreport. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. You find all of our report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.